Yeah, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. We're now in uh, version 18.2, and there has been some changes, most notably in the RCS thrusters. The fact that they've been so incredibly overpowered has been corrected, and the size of the RCS fuel tanks has been increased. And uh, that change applies to all existing ship designs, except the ship designs that were actually in flight. So all of these components of the space station, I had to replace them in order to get the proper size fuel tank. Because the RCS tanks now, the large ones are 750, and the small ones are 100, where they used to be 200 and 25, respectively. And so because of this, I had to replace all of these components. I did also get a second one of these landers attached. And uh, when I got the second one on there, uh, let's see, I believe. Oh, come on, you had the crew hatch. Where is it? Yeah, oh, Edvin Kerman on that last flight. I decided I didn't want to try yet another round with him in the spacewalk, so I left him in the lander. So that's all fine and dandy. He can uh, go along on the big trip. And so there remains to be one more part replaced on the space station, and that is this long fuel tank and mainsail engine because I realized that for what I have in mind, a mainsail is really the wrong choice of a drive for this thing. So the part of the, well, the, let's go ahead to the VAB here. And uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. This part here is what ended up being the two aft sections of the space station. And I've redesigned it. I've added three of the nuclear engines up here. And down here, I've put in an arrangement so that the mainsail can be jettisoned when it's no longer needed and uh, some extra solid boosters here to give it a little bit of extra push off the launch pad and what's going to happen is this thing will get up there and the existing part from here down that's on the space station now will be replaced with this and this here will undock. And this is uh, a small unmanned capsule, one of those unmanned robot capsules. It will fly over and dock with the empty big fuel tank and engine mainsail that's on there now and deorbit it. See, what I'll have this thing do is get up there. This will dock, or excuse me, this part will separate and park nearby in orbit. This part from here down will dock with the space station on a, somewhere, transfer fuel to the big tank. Actually, come to think of it, yeah, I'm going to have to undock the big tank, dock this thing to it, transfer its fuel, the big tank's fuel, into this thing, and then have this dock with the space station, and this probe body here is going to dock with the big tank and deorbit it. Sounds like a bunch of complicated stuff, and I suppose it is, but I think it'll work. And uh, these three nuclear engines, these Nervas, will do much better job for what I have in mind for this thing. So we're off to the launch pad to try to get this done so that we can avoid any further delays and get the two large landers attached to that station. 
All right, let's uh, switch out here and run time ahead to bring the station, space station over here so we've got a better position for rendezvous. That should be good. All right. SAS on, find controls, throttle up, and let's do this. Not bad. Seems to be going all right. The solid boosters burn for like 30 seconds, and that's long enough for two sets of these uh, asparagus stages to fall off. Okay, losing the solid boosters any second now. Another set of liquids. Okay, looks like we're doing fairly well. Okay, once I get this on a stable ascent trajectory, what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut until I'm actually on docking approach to the space station in order to uh, cut down the amount of processing time it's going to take to get this video out. So, let's see. Let's start our pitch. That's good. Pitching a little more. All right, looks good. How's our apoapsis? 32,000 and climbing. All right. Okay, looks like this is going to be fairly uneventful, so I'm going to go ahead and cut to space station approach. All right. I'm finally on approach to the station, and I am finding that this particular ship is somewhat of a royal bear to control on thrusters which means that docking is going to be a problem, if it is possible at all. And if not, then that means I'll have to go, either go back to the drawing board or just stick with the mainsail engine on that station as it is. Because I'm really not sure if I'm going to be able to dock this thing. Because ever, so far I've switched to docking mode a couple of times, and when the RCS and SAS are on at the same time, it's going like this. And you can see here just how fast it's going through RCS fuel. And uh, that's not going to be very productive at all. So I'm going to give this one decent shot, and if by the time I reach say one kilometer from the station it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to dock then uh, I'm going to just have to abort do a re-entry and try again on the next mission probably with a different design either that or just abort the whole idea of changing that part of the station
but I think maybe I'm at least getting on target now. I'm at least aimed for where the station is going to be, mostly. But you can see how hard it is to control this thing with thrusters. Mostly because the thrusters are all in this upper portion. And that's not being very helpful at all. Oh boy. Time to swing around to kill this velocity I have built up. Preferably before. I crash into the station. All of a sudden this thing keeps wanting to start spinning. Closing in, going through RCS fuel like crazy. This tank is all but empty, and then there's these three tanks here, but I don't know, this is not looking good. See if we can start moving towards the station more directly. It's going to be a game of thrust towards it, cancel the velocity, thrust towards it again, and so on. And I'm starting to have serious doubts about my ability to dock this beast. Because it doesn't translate for crap. I'll switch it into docking mode and you'll see what I mean. Engage RCS. We get thruster wobble. Turn SAS off. And it starts to spin. So that's pretty much what we've got going on here. My brilliant new design might work on a newly fresh launch station. You know, as this being the thing that the station would attach to. But having this go and attach to a station doesn't seem to be such a great idea. Hmm. As a matter of fact, I don't think this is going to be too good at all. I 
So I think I'm going to go for a change plan. Let's check out here first. Yeah, we're in a good orbit. So how about this? We'll leave this ship here, and it can be the basis of Space Station 2. I think that's what it will do. Rename Vessel. Station 2. And this can be the basis upon which we build the second space station. Meanwhile, this space station, on the next mission, will get two heavy landers on each, well, one on each of these two docking ports. And then, let's see. Yeah, that's a docking port there. I've got uh, something I want to attach to that port. And then we can get this mission really underway for sure. And I realized that uh, after I just checked just now, it seems like it's been a long time to me, but I realized all of a sudden that this is about a 15 or 17 minute episode. And I'm sorry it's so much shorter, but... Trust me, this has taken every bit of three hours to fly this mission. Well, about two and a half hours to fly this mission so far. And, you know, two and a half hours out of the three hours and 22 minutes on the mission elapsed time clock. Oh, wait a minute, that's the other ship. About two hours of that is uh, how long it's actually taken to fly this thing to this point. And, well, it's not been my best day for flying, I'll put it that way. So, in some time in the future, this thing can sit up here for building a second station. And in the next flight, we'll get landers attached to that thing and the final piece, and then we'll send it on its mission. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'm out of here. I promise, better episode next time.